Uh, it's a bit dangerous to get a Fijian to speak first because we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> so, Mula Vinaka, Salam Alaikum, and welcome my Melanesian sisters and brothers, and to my other sisters and brothers from different misters. Good afternoon and good day. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to speak today on my thoughts on the topic of the importance of gender equity in communities. And I will do that by sharing uh, some of my life story. I apologize in advance if some of my story is uh, familiar or too familiar for some of you. Uh, the intention is not to bring up forgotten memories, but to remind us that we women are the stronger species, sorry men, that we are. That's why God created Eve. <laughs> so here, here it is. Once upon a time, I was born on the beautiful island of Fiji. I am 50% uh, indigenous Fijian, or Itoke, they call it. 25% Chinese and 25% Irish. You can see the Irish is coming right at you. I straightened my hair just for this. <laughs> uh, before my younger sister was born, I grew up in a house of three brothers and a dad that worked afternoon shift in the hotel music industry. My mom worked day shift, as a, I think the Australians call it a checkout chick at the local supermarket. I was taught at a very young age by my dad to cook and clean the house, do all the ironing. And my brothers, my three brothers, they only had three jobs. Go to the bread shop every morning to buy bread, take the bins out once a week, and buy my dad's alcohol from the bomb shop. If I wanted to go to the shops just to look around, my dad would say, what for? Why are you going? Send your brothers. Why do you have to go? If you want to go to town, you must have a purpose. But he never said that to my brothers. It was only me that he said that to. My eldest brother is two years older than me, and he's actually my half-brother. We have different fathers. That's a different story. <laughs> In my primary and secondary years of schooling, my dad would say to me, why aren't you smart like your brother? Or why are you getting Bs and he's getting A pluses in schoolwork? Um, maybe because he's got his dad's genes and I've got your dad ones. But you know what? I was thinking that I never said it because as an Islander girl, you don't speak it because you get the Fijian or the Papua New Guinean backslap. So my dad never hit me physically or he never hit my mom. But I'm going to rephrase that. My dad never hit me, but my mom did. I think my mom sometimes took out her frustrations on me. And I got the uh, wrath of the wooden spoon. Until one day I got so smart, I hit the spoon and guess what happened? She brought the metal spoon. <laughs> so I go and tell dad, look what mom did to me. <laughs> but I will say, unfortunately, my dad hit my brothers. Uh, not my elder brother, but my two brothers. And they really copped it. And the only person that could stop him going any further was my mom. And that was the influence my mom actually had on my father. However, many years after his death, my mom actually told me that although my dad never hit her, he controlled her emotionally and psychologically. And he did this by saying stuff like, why are you wearing that dress for? Why is your dress too short? Why have you got makeup on? How come you come late today? Um, I thought you finished at 3.30. Why are you here? It's 3.35. So she endured that. I grew up in a Pacific Island nation in the 70s where family violence and corporate punishment was rife. And it was common in our families, but hidden and not spoken because it would bring shame to our family, shame to our name, shame to the status of the family. And worse than that, we were brought up from a very young age, respect your elders because they know what's right Respect them as you watch them beat their wives and their daughters. Don't speak unless spoken to. How often do women get spoken to? It's always like, oh, when is the lunch or the dinner ready? Why is the baby crying? Why is the house messy? And this one, whenever we do see family violence, 
oh, it's none of our business. It's their business. Let them sort it out. You know what? We'll pray for them. And don't get me started with the corporal punishment in schools. So when I came in this today, I saw this sign, uh, hashtag, it's not our culture. I had to amend my notes. Because I actually wrote, how can we be courageous when some of our own Pacific culture and traditions that have evolved through the generations and impacted by colonization inhibits us at a very young age? Mind your own business, don't say anything. It controls us. Our, some of our culture, not all, some of our culture actually controls us. It disadvantages us as a woman and as a young girl right from the very start, right from the time we leave the islands on that airplane or store away on that boat. When we come to Australia, we bring that into this land. Uh, some of the family violence statistics in the Pacific Islands are it's 63% across Melanesian countries. And Melanesia, that's us. That's Fiji and Papua New Guinea. What's going on? Can't we just play rugby? 44% <laughs> across Micronesia. So Micronesia is doing pretty, uh, you know, it's still bad. That's Kiribati and Guam and all those countries. And 43% across Polynesia. As domestic violence is highly underreported, the actual rates of domestic violence is actually very much higher. You know, uh, I'm gonna talk shortly about the project that I'm doing with the Fijian women. And one thing I did was I actually asked for the statistics of Fijian women who reported family violence. No one could give me that. And so I said, all right, forget about Fijian. How about Pacific Islander? Oh no, we can't give you that. So it's not getting reported. You know, I was blind, or maybe I didn't want to know. It's their business. Let them worry about it. To this new knowledge that I gained from this project of the impacts of systemic colonization and gender inequality as a Fijian woman. Until one day in late 2020, God put a thought, and thought in my head and he said, Sil, you know, he calls me Sil. Sil, <laughs> there's a family violence grant. You should apply for it. And I said, please, uh, I have to apply for these festival grants because that's what we like. We like to party, Fijians <laughs> like to eat food, drink, hava, and party. And he goes, well, I think you should apply for this family violence grant. And I was uncomfortable with that. And I didn't want to apply. Uh, the, the, the body that was giving the grant, our watch, actually said to us, why don't you guys apply for it? And I said, oh, I want to apply for this festival grant because I'm really comfortable with that one. But somehow God made me apply for it. And guess what? We were the first Pacific Island group to get this grant. And we didn't have any training. We had no qualifications. And just like true Fijians, we just winged it. We winged the whole application. <laughs> and the uh, Victorian State government said, here you go, you can have the money. <laughs> so this project I call the Tangi Mavia Project. It's about making our Fijian women aware of the gender drivers of family violence in the Fijian community. Because I believe as a leader and as a woman and a mother that family violence is not okay. And I'm sick and tired of the endless cycle of our Fijian women not reaching out to get appropriate help from people that are qualified and equipped to help them. But instead they're going to churches and other people, uh, other women for help, and then what happens? They get sent back home to where the violence begins again. Uh, the project is scoped to 40 to 50 Fijian women, including our Indo-Fijian Indo women from the west and the southeast suburbs. And one thing about the project, it, it helped me understand the real reasons why I did the dishes and housework and ironing and my brothers didn't. I couldn't go to town but my brothers could go whenever they wanted. I had to please my dad and all the male partners, that constant need to please a male at a very young age in my studies. I looked the other way when I was a young girl, when I saw my aunties getting beaten by my uncles and not say anything. I did and I said nothing when my brothers got beaten badly by my dad. And all that trauma you bring from the island, you bring it here, 
And as a woman in my 30s and 40s, I suffered psychological abuse from two intimate male partners. I got looked over for work promotion by male counterparts who did less work than me or less qualified than me. I got paid 20% less for the same job that my male counterpart got for the same work. Like Victoria said, knowledge is power. Sorry, I think you just stole my line. You said, I was like, damn it, she's fired me. <laughs> knowledge is power. Get educated in why family violence happens and how can we stop it from happening again and again. I'm nearly there, guys, I'm nearly there. Um, ask questions. Read up the Changing the Story and Changing the Picture resources on the Our Watch website. Once you become aware, don't just lock it in your head. Do something about it. Tell someone that you care about. Share the knowledge. You know, we women, we love to gossip. If someone here says they don't, they don't gossip at all, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> if you want to gossip about something, how about gossip about the prevention of family violence? Yes. Spread the word. Tell someone, and it's just going to go Chinese whispers until the end. It's going to be about ordering a pizza. <laughs> Spread the word. Tell someone else. Because you never know. The next person you tell about this is probably going through something, and they're probably blaming themselves. Tell them that it actually stemmed from something far deeper. Spread the word so that it goes back to our islands back to our people and back to our families. Don't let some of our evolved Pacific culture and traditions inhibit us because our culture and our tradition has evolved over the years. It's become what men think is appropriate. Be bold, be brave and speak up. We are in a new world, we are in a new country, a new home. We are not back in the islands. Because some of us think and act that we are still living back in the island. I'm sorry, there's no beach there for you to go out fishing. Family violence statistics are getting worse in the Pacific Island. Focus on what we can change here, one beat at a time. Let's together help break the cycle of violence in families, one day at a time. Report bad behavior to the appropriate authorities so people can actually get the help they need. We all have a role to play.